if you're watching this, then it probably means that you just watched the New York Mets lose to the San Diego Padres this weekend. And if so, then all I have to say is, how? How did the New York freaking Mets manage to let something like this even come close to happening? If you told me only a month ago that my Mets were going to lose in the playoffs, then I probably would have believed it. But if you would also said that the Mets were not only going to lose in the playoffs, but that it was also going to be in the wild card round, I would have put you in a mental institution on the spot just for saying something absolutely insane like that. But damn, oh damn, these boys in blue never fail to disappoint, huh? God, don't even get me started on the Mets looking like an absolute clown house trying to check Musgrove for illegal substances. Like, come on, Buck. Just because Musgrove was cooking you for six innings doesn't mean he was cheating. It just means the Mets suck. These guys led their division on April 12th and held that lead all the way up to October 1st with only one day being in an exception during that period. And to put that into perspective, the Mets led the National League East for 155 games out of a 162 game season. And the Mets were in charge the entire, the entire season, but I guess it doesn't matter what you did to get there, but more importantly, how you finish. And the reason winning the NL East was so vital and why I'm putting so much emphasis on that is because the two division leaders with the best record in each league will have buys in the wildcard round of the playoffs, which is a huge incentive. And had New York held on to that division lead for like one more week, then the possibility of getting eliminated this early is impossible. It can't happen because you're not playing. But of course, that isn't how it went. So what did happen, you might be wondering? Well, to know that, we have to go all the way back to Friday, September 30th, when division-leading New York Mets began the first of a three-game series between their rivals, Atlanta Braves, who, may I add, got off to a very slow start this season with like a mid-record of 23-27 and 27 at the end of May. And if you ask me, it was probably because of a classic case of a World Series hangover, which happens more than you think. There hasn't been a back-to-back -back World Series champion since the Yankees rattled, rattled off a three-peat from like 1998 to 2000. Anyway, uh, back, to, back to September 30th, where the Mets went into it with a one-game lead on the Braves for the division tie. So the only thing that needed to happen for New York was for the Mets to take two, or at the very least, and I mean very least, one game in that series. But in game numero uno, the Mets put out ace Jacob deGrom on the mound in hopes of, well, winning. And deGrom was nothing but sloppy, allowing three runs in six innings and losing the game. Just losing it. And the pattern would continue to follow as the Mets allowed four plus runs in the next two games while also giving up two home runs to both Dansby Swanson and Matt Olson. You know, it's crazy. They, they did two different, two different players. And getting swept by the Braves may have been one of the biggest choke jobs that baseball has ever seen. Because now, Scherzer, DeGrom, and the gang would have to play a whole extra round of postseason baseball. And even though they sold versus Atlanta, the choke job was nowhere near done. Because they still had an entire best of three series versus San Diego. And the not so great pitching that took place in the Atlanta Braves series repeated in game one of the wildcard match. Because... Damn, did Scherzer get blasted. The supposed ace ended up allowing seven runs, seven hits in four and two thirds innings while giving up like four home runs to four different people. Four, four. And that doesn't mean the offense is off the hook though because the Mets only produced a total of one run in the games they lost. Now game two was a bit of a bounce back for the Mets in which it was the only game in the series where they actually looked like themselves winning 7-3. It was nice. It was nice. You know, you know what happened in Game 3? San Diego got to work on both sides of the fucking game. Not only scoring six runs, but allowing one hit. One. It's so poetic that the last play of the season for the Mets involved Starling Marte tripping over himself like the club did for the past two weeks. Anyway, that's it, guys. And if it sounds like I'm disappointed or angry, it's because I fucking am.